Hey everyone, this is Chris Keys from PremierGuitar.com. I'm here with Johnny Wickersham and uh, Mike Ness of <laughs> Social Distortion. Um, how are you guys doing today? We're good, man. It's hot as ass here. <laughs> well, we're here hanging out with Council Bluffs here. We'll see what you guys got for gear right now. Uh, Johnny, you want to walk us through what you're using live right now? Well, uh, for the live stuff? Yeah, we'll um, start there and we'll talk about your Yeah, I got a couple hands. old juniors. Um, I got a 55 junior and a, and a 57 TV model that are staples in the uh, in the quiver right now. Uh, 54 gold top. Yeah. Um, and my old black guard telly. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Besides that one, it seems like the, that's the only one that you don't have P90s in. Obviously mm -hmm. you're not gonna do that to a, a black guard, but uh, what's your affinity for a P90s? Uh, they just, uh, you know what, I actually bought a, I started playing with Mike, uh, and I bought a uh, 69 gold top and it had mini humbuckers in it and I just followed his lead and I put uh, the Seymour Duncans, you know, that he plays in his in there and, and it's been P90 ever since. And for amps, I know that you got to use, you're using the old guitars, but for amps you're using the satellite. What, what got you kind of hooked on those? A friend of mine brought Adam down to a show we did in, uh, in San Diego at the Soma and he brought that head, that same head I'm playing right now, he brought it down there and I just, <clears throat> at the time I was playing an old, uh, Marshall, a Plexi Face 69 Marshall, and that was my number one head. And um, I just kind of, I thought that amp blew it away. It was so much, it was so perfect for, you know, the simplicity of, of, of a single P90 with volume and tone through a, through a, you know, a Class A head with volume and tone. It was just perfect for what we do. Yeah. It was ideal. So what what would you characterize that, that tone that you're going? I know your tech was saying it kind of goes with the AC30, which is kind of what you you know you're just rock and roll there. Yeah, but it doesn't to me it doesn't sound like an AC30 at all. I know it has the EL84s in there, yeah. but um, you know it just to me it actually sounds like a like a big Valco. Oh, right. You know it's just it's that that Class A sound, man. It just you know. Mike, what do you got going on with your? I know you got you know your 70s gold tops. What what else are you run in there? Well, I've had this rig for about uh, over 15 years yeah. now. It's basically I look at my rig as a as like a small block Chevy. <laughs> you know, and you just put the key in and turn it, and it starts. It it runs itself. You know, I got the uh, uh, 67 blackface baseman with a mod done by you know Fred DeCone from Divided by 13, uh, which allows me to get a nice you know tone a slightly lower volume when wow. i my first amp as a kid was a fender basement on a 212 cabinet and i didn't even know how to play yet and the only way you could get that thing to sound good was up at 10 yeah. and uh i lived across the street from a baseball park and the park would carry the sound to the other <laughs> side so the cops would come and they would say well, would you at least learn how to play smoke on the water right <laughs> Seems like everyone learned those three chords, huh? <laughs> yeah. So, you know, later on it was natural, you know, to go back. You know, I had in the early, late 80s, early 90s, I was just having that, you know, battle between Fender, Marshall, Fender, Marshall, and, you know, kind of ended up with both. I got yeah. the 50-watt uh, head powering two vintage cabinets. That's eight speakers, eight 30-watt speakers, and uh, it spreads nice. And then, you know, the last Paul Deluxe is, yeah. I, you know, that's a trick I learned from Neil Young. Larry Craig, his tech, and when we toured with Neil Young in the early 90s, uh, was that's what I did the whole time. I watched him play every night, and I, I picked his brain about tone, and uh, that's, you know, I would watch Larry Craig get a Les Paul Deluxe, uh -huh. 70s Les Paul Deluxe, Pull out that thin mini humbucker and drop it into the waste basket. <laughs> <laughs> Put the P90s in, and you know, for me, that the P90 is that is that creamy, warm tone that you know I'll put up with the hum any day. You know, just because that that's become part of our sound. The gold tops are our 76s. They've got the maple neck something about that combination of the maple neck being capoed the paint and the amps my other guitars are a little earlier 75s maybe with the mahogany neck uh -huh. with no capo 
Well, I like to use a lot of open strings, and because I told you I injured this finger, you know, as a kid, uh, you know, that's how I do an A minor. It's like Django on a little yeah. slightly smaller scale. Yeah. But we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about your guys' acoustics right now. What, what do you got playing here? This has probably written a lot of songs, I'm sure. Yeah, this is the this is the balladeer guitar. <laughs> this is a uh, 1939 J35, and I write everything on this guitar. That's where and, it all starts. Uh, and uh, it very rarely leaves the house. The only way this will leave the house is if the bus is picking us up in California and dropping us off in California. Uh -huh. uh, I would never put this on a plane or a cargo. Or it's just something about it. You know, uh, last year I bought a. 1940 Martin D18. Same week I bought this. I mean, I have several of these. Uh -huh. uh, same week I bought this. I got it home. I'm like, I got a Martin now, dude. It's like set them up every single day. I look at them. Went to the J35. Okay, yeah. hey, what's this one that's in your hands here? Uh, this this one? is this seems my 47 well. uh, J45. Um, you know, it's kind of a beater. It's got a bunch of cracks and shit. And um, you know, it's kind of a good road guitar in that sense, you know, it's just it's been worked on and everything, but LR Bags pickup system, which has got the end of the saddle, and it's got the, um, the microphone, you know, so. And I, I've been through a bunch of these J45s. Uh, I had an all, an all mahogany maple necked one with the real, the real early banner year with the huge, huge neck, and it was a little... It was a little too big sounding. It was actually like so big that it was kind of too much, you know. And this this is like the perfect one, you know. So uh, we use this on stage. So what's uh, entailed for the new album? How's that coming along? It's coming great, man. It's uh, you know uh, the record should be called Tones <laughs> because you know we recorded it very old school. You know, very, uh, Ocean Studios in Burbank had uh, you know uh, uh, an amazing Neve board with every piece of outboard gear you could imagine, you know, Poltex and Fairchilds and, uh, you know, I work with a really good engineer, uh, Dwayne Barron, and, uh, you know, he was able to get, you know, everything that I needed, whether from the drum sounds or the guitar tones or the vocal mics. Uh, I mean, we really learned on this record that less is better. Uh -huh. You know, it's like, and, uh, you know, get everything, get your tones good to tape, and then, you know, you EQ it, you're good. And so were you guys bringing a lot of other gear in, or were you kind of sticking to what you guys are using on the stage and everything? It was basically, it was funny, it was basically what we use on stage, although sometimes I would use both my head and his. So the satellite and the, the basement. Another thing that about this new record that uh, it's kind of new for you guys, or especially for you, is producing. So how's that been so far? How how do you enjoy being the producer in the project? I love it. I mean, I love it. I just being at the helm just allows you to be, uh, you know, so much more focused and, uh, uh, you know, hypersensitive. You know, yeah. and it's like it's not right. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. You know, and uh, it's been a great experience for me. Do you guys have a title nailed down for sure? The name of the record is Hard Times and Nursery Rhymes. It's a metaphor for a lot of what's going on now in our, you know, economy, but also just, you know, how, yeah, I mean, I have people all the time telling me, you know, your, your music's got me through some hard times, bro. And I said, me too. So I just have one last thing to say. That. in relation to guitars if you don't have your tone you might as well just go home <laughs> I thank you guys very much Johnny thank you very much Mike thank you for your guys' time you're watching premierguitar.com and this is Chris for Premier Guitar Magazine